If I say the name Ford Taurus, most people think of the kind of tired and dated design when the car was retired just a few years ago. But can you think back all the way to 1986 when the Taurus was first introduced? Back then, it was a revolutionary design like nothing Detroit had ever built before. The clean lines, rounded shape, flush windows, and bold change made the Taurus a huge seller. In 1989, Ford introduced the Taurus SHO with sleeper high-performance capabilities that built a cult following. So, can Ford regain those glory days with the new Taurus, and is this SHO as innovative as the original was? We'll have a look at it. First of all, it looks like no Taurus we've ever seen before. It's big and it's bold, and in the SHO trim, it's a pretty good-looking car. This vehicle is leaving the station. Please hold on. It shares the same platform as the Lincoln MKS that we reviewed last year, and both are built up from a Volvo S80 platform. We saw this trend started with the Chrysler 300, and that's to have a very tall door, or what's called a high belt line, and then a narrow window along the side. Now the issue with this is outward visibility, of course. In combination with the very thick A-pillar and the side mirror cluster, looking down the road to your right or left is an issue. It's a bit cumbersome. Also in the back of the car, You'll notice that it has a very high deck, meaning the back window is rather small. That's all an issue for the driver. Anybody looking at the car thinks it looks pretty good. Now, I've never really had a four-door American-made sedan gather any attention, but this SHO people are stopping and asking about it because it looks pretty hot. The SHO gets 20-inch wheels with an aggressive design and satin paint finish. The rear deck has a spoiler. The twin exhausts also let people know that this is a serious machine. Speaking of the high rear deck, I would definitely suggest getting the backup camera. It would be totally worthwhile on this vehicle. Now the trunk is absolutely huge. It's nice and wide and deep. And as well, the seats fold forward, so you've got tons of space. But there is one thing that's missing. There's no uh, grab handle to pull the trunk down, so you've got to use the outside of it. So it's something pretty basic, and I can't believe that they missed it. The inside of the Taurus is a pleasant surprise. The overall shape and the design is almost exactly the same as the Lincoln MKS we reviewed last year. They both share the same platform, but this is obviously a sportier execution with the SHO. They've done a nice job of using soft touch materials. It's broken up with different contrasting materials like this carbon look in the center console, the door. It's nicely done and it's got flowing lines and it isn't broken up. They've put some thought into it, that's for sure. Now it's also sporty in the seats. They're comfortable and bolstered. The side bolsters are leather, but the inside here is actually made of faux suede and it's made up of recycled plastic bottles. Models. Standard on the SHO and the Taurus Limited is the active motion seat feature that gently massages you so there are no pressure points and it helps relieve driver fatigue. Of course, there's a long list of electronic goodies like the sync system, Sony stereo with iPod and USB integration, and optional voice activated navigation. There is tons of leg room for all the passengers, but up front here there's this really big, wide console. And when you're sitting here with the center console, the high door frame with the small window, kind of makes you feel like you're really enclosed, even though you actually do have a lot of space here. These seats are very comfortable, and I'm going to turn the massager on, and Zach can take me for a ride. <laughs> Sure, this SHO has all the power and lots of standard equipment, but it comes at a price. It starts at about $48,000, and this car, equipped with navigation and a few other goodies, comes in at about $53,000. But not to worry, there's a cheaper Taurus if you want one. All but the SHO get the regular non-turbo 3.5 liter V6 with 265 horsepower. And they can be ordered as front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And the price is much easier to take, starting under $30,000. The large platform and capable engine, along with very quiet and supple suspension, make this car feel more expensive. The addition of advanced safety features like blind spot warning systems, adaptive cruise control with collision warning and more have been borrowed heavily from the Ford controlled Volvo cars. So this Taurus SHO is not cheap, but you have to keep in mind you're looking at a full-size car, 365 horsepower, all-wheel drive, very well kitted out on the inside. But this vehicle, if you add it all up, is a relative bargain. And it does it all very well. It's continuing the thread that we're seeing from Ford a very well executed vehicles at the highest level of finish, well put together and well thought out. So congratulations to Ford for having another excellent product. 
This new Taurus SHO is being used to showcase Ford Ingenuity. And the first order of business, the EcoBoost technology. In order to meet the demands of power-hungry buyers, but at the same time get better fuel consumption, Ford has developed a twin-turbo 3.5-liter V6 with direct injection technology to produce the power of a V8 with V6 fuel economy. Okay, so get this. This vehicle has a whopping 365 horsepower, and it only uses 8 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway. Now, keep in mind, if you are a bit more of an aggressive driver, and of course, the fuel ratings will suffer. The power goes through a six-speed automatic, which can be shifted on the steering wheel, to an all-wheel drive system that adapts to road conditions and driving style. Well, I've really started to warm up to some of the Ford vehicles, and this new Taurus SHO is no exception. I absolutely love the smooth, powerful engine, and it is so comfortable. I could really see myself driving this car every day. So Zach, do you think that this new Taurus is going to bring back the glory days of the Taurus name and is this SHO worth almost $50,000? Well, I'll start with the brand first of all. Ford believes that Taurus has some equity, so that's why they continue with the name. Ultimately, the SHO is the high performance model and I'm glad to see that the SHO is back. It's got gobs of power. Now, the Taurus in general has a nice finish to it. The interior is quiet and comfortable. It's got a high level of finish. On the downside, couple of things. The transmission, you got the paddle shifters on the wheel, but if you just want to have like a sport setting and let the car do the work on its own, it's not offered. You get drive or the paddle shifters, nothing in the middle. Outward visibility is an issue with those small windows in the high deck. And they have the push button entry into the car. I would rather the keyless entry where you just grab the door and it unlocks automatically, but I guess we're just getting spoiled. We get so many cars to drive. What do you like and not like about it? Well, you know what, Zach? I like to be spoiled a little bit. It's part of the job, right? <laughs> what I like about this car is the the fabulously powerful engine and it's so nice and smooth and quiet. The seats are so comfortable. They're very bolstered and fitted and then you get that massage feature and you could spend hours driving this car. There's tons of space for the passengers. There's also a lot of cargo space in that back end. Now on the downside, I don't like the small windows either. It really uh, interfered with outward visibility. The shifter in the middle, it's just, it's too big for my hands. And I know it's a small thing, but um, the key fob, just a little weird, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to go with the car. It looks kind of cheap. And it's big, but you get a big key fob, a big shifter, and a big car. Uh, you know what though, Lacey, we really should look at this car in the overall context of Ford, and they're continuing to bring out excellent products, many we've chosen as our picks from the last season. So congratulations to Ford. Want more? What exactly is EcoBoost? Watch an online-only segment at drivingtelevision.com.